what is up everybody welcome back to the red shirts fantasy football podcast happy monday we are starting off the week right with a mock draft monday a super flex mock draft monday here on the show today our first one of the season we've done a couple of mock drafts so far but no super flex mock so this is going to be the first time for the season really interested to see how it plays out before we get into all of that good stuff let's check in with the other co-host okada john how are we doing on this beautiful monday uh, I, I will say this, Betts. It is technically a Friday for us because we record on Friday our mock draft mm. Monday pod. And when mm-hmm. you said <laughs> the first time you said Monday, I immediately in my mind was like, you doofus. It is Friday. <laughs> what are you talking about? How do you not know what day of the week it is? It took me a good five seconds to realize what you were doing. Uh, so fortunately, <laughs> I didn't sass you for that. But yeah, it's Friday and Monday. Um, so basically (laughs) for you for you listeners i'm sorry you're on your way to work for us three happy friday guys Mm, we made it we made it we made it and the only way to end the week or start the week or any part of the week is really to do a mock draft because drafting to me is the best part of fantasy football uh fellas i'm really excited to see what happens in this mock draft before we get to that we have to remind the people one more time because you know what guys it's running out Time is running out. Get in the contest. The Devontae Adams signed jersey giveaway ends on the 17th of this month, June 17th. You have two days to get in that contest. Here's how to do it. Sign up for Patreon. Get up in patreon.com. How many entries do they get if they become a patron? 10. Oh, my. Heavily weighted. By the way, I just dropped my MVP bets I'm making in 2020 in that... uh, Patreon mm. crew for the Patreon crew in the uh, DFS and sports betting tier. So check that out. The other way to enter, leave a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. That is mm. worth five entries. Wow. Three entries if you subscribe on YouTube. And if you're already watching on YouTube, just pause this real quick. Hit subscribe and then True. hit play again to get back on the on the show. It's right That's there. That's three the entries. It's right there. Literally right there. <laughs> One entry. For liking and retweeting the pin tweet at the top of at Richards FF Pod show account. You have to be following us to do that. Also, find the same post on our Instagram page, same handle at Richards FF Pod. Give it a like. That is how you enter. You can get up to quick math Okada. What is it? 10 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2. 20? No. 20. 20? 20. Yep, dude, you totally redeem yourself after that terrible math <laughs> on uh, Friday's show. True. <laughs> Eight plus six is uh, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. totally redeem yourself. Perfect. Oh man, uh, but yeah, oh, seriously, man. listeners, check that out. It's not going to last long. We'll probably give it away maybe end of next week or early the week after. So, mm-hmm. 17th is the last time to enter. Get up in there, do it. Also, and if that reminder- was all just too confusing because bets gave you like. 5,000 different ways. It's all mm-hmm. in the pin tweet. True. Yep. Just go Very to the pin tweet and it's all right there for everything you can do. Yes. Also, a reminder to the listeners be sure to check out the articles on the website. We have stuff going up every day at this point in the season. A new coaching changes article from uh, one of our writers looking at the Browns, Kevin Stefanski. Mm. Huge debate on the pod this week with Nick Chubb and that Browns offense. So please check that out on the website. All right, boys, we have one piece of news to get into here. Actually, some injury updates, and then we will get into the mock draft. I got great news, guys. Oh, ah! Fellas, it's another offseason. It's another Sony Michelle injury. I mean, at this point, three surgeries in three <sighs> NFL seasons. This time, it's for his foot most recently in may now i'll be honest this caught me off guard i read up the injury report section for the fantasy footballers ultimate draft kit i did not have sony michelle in my list because he didn't miss time last year with the foot injury so this is kind of coming out of out of nowhere so to speak however i will say sony michelle does have a history of multiple ankle sprains in college this can lead to trouble down the road as we've seen with other players so this is more of a, a cleanup procedure so to speak probably just going into kind of um, you know, clear out debris in the joint and help him with his mobility and pain, but still a surgery and still for a player like Sonny Michelle, guys, third surgery in three years, history of an ACL injury in high school. Uh, I mean, at this point, you just have to ask yourself, can he stay healthy and can he stay on an NFL football field? 
And guys, he averaged like 3.7 yards per carry. I, I think I'm just out on Sony at this point, and this is one other reason why. What are your guys' thoughts? I mean, my first thought is James White, please. Yes, and thank you. Draft him everywhere. My second thought is, is Georgia like the college version of the Chargers? Because they're just <laughs> pumping out running backs with no knees. <laughs> Everybody it's sell true. Nick Chubb because in a year he's going to have no knees uh, or any lower body parts, apparently. Yeah, and that's honestly, rough. he almost dislocated his knee in college. There you, you guys go. That major. Oh, injury. yeah. Oh, I the forgot about that. That was the worst one of tear. all. The only ligament he didn't tear was his ACL. Tore three other ones. Good remarkable gracious. that he's doing this well. So, yeah. Yeah. There's some truth to that for sure. Um, yeah. What do you guys think about Damian Harris? He is yeah, like a forgotten man and, and kind of maybe the dynasty player to talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, John, what do you think? Yeah, that's where I was going to go with it is, you know, we, we talked about Damian Harris a couple weeks ago um, as someone that we were comfortable with as a late round dart throw. And the more and more bad news that continues to come out about Sony, I mean, he looked, he, he turned like a freight liner last season, just couldn't cut at all. And now had another procedure in, in, in the foot it's like dude like i don't know i mean is this the last year of sony like is this is this his last shot to like carve out an actual role in an nfl offense because if it's not going to be this year it's like what's the future like for sony michelle i i just don't see it i i'd take the late round shot on on damian harris um you know he didn't get a lot of run this last year and i think with sony michelle coming off of of injury problems and I, I think that I think that Damien is going to get a shot. Like I think that he's going to get an opportunity to have a game or two, and it's Bill Belichick. So so like who knows what he does with his running backs? But if he has a game where he gets like 16 carries, like if he gets a lion share in a game and does really well with it, I could see them just being like, okay, he he's the one at the depth chart. Everyone's still going to be involved. But I think that he will have an opportunity to carve out a good role, especially if Sonny Michelle starts off slow. Uh, you know, it, I don't know what the recovery is like on this. Uh, probably nothing major in terms of recovery time would be my guess, but that would be a best question. But I think that Damian Harris is absolutely worth the late round shot to see if he carves out a good, decent role there in that offense because that offense doesn't have a whole lot else going. They're not going to have Jared Stidham throw it 40 times a game. So the running game is probably going to be important. It's going to be a, they're going to try to win on defense and running the ball. And Damien is going to have a shot. Yeah. And worth noting per uh, sharp football, uh, the best in the business at looking at strength of schedule, the dude's analytics, unreal. Um, the, the Patriots open up with this, the first six weeks, the softest uh, defense for running backs to face. So, very intriguing to see what happens early in the season with this backfield. Even if you get Damien Harris as the lead back for three or four games and you take him in like the 15th round of your draft, like a right. steal. You mentioned the, the recovery timeline. The foot is always just problematic. It's always a longer recovery because it's a weight-bearing part of the body, obviously. And typically, there's a lot of torsional stress in those joints, which is tough for cutting sports. So obviously, football falls into that category. Actually, ESPN's uh, Mike Reese reported that there's potential for Sony to start on pup if this doesn't go wow. well throughout the summer, Ew. which I was very surprised to hear. So yeah, yeah that's big. there's red flags everywhere with Sony Michelle. Personally, I'm out. Um, and really quick, just to comment on his contract status, he is under contract through 2021. Remember, he was a first round pick, so he has a four year right. deal, uh, the potential for the fifth year option. We'll see. I, I would be shocked at this point if they picked it up, but there is an opening in that Patriots backfield. We got to get it right. Someone's got to take the, the lead role there and someone's going to be productive. It's just a matter of who it's going to be. All right, boys, let's get into the mock draft. We're doing a 12 team super flex uh, PPR mm -hmm. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex and a super flex. Lots of roster spots here to get into boys. But before we get into it, I forgot we even have this drop. So I have to hit it because it's an awesome drop. Mm. Mock. Yeah. Mock. Yeah. Ing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Love we it. We are doing this on our, our good friends, Fantasy Pros. We're doing it on their platform with the draft. I'm going to start the draft right now. We're going to randomize the order. We will see where we are picking in the 12 team mock draft. Oh, Okada at the 1.01. 1. 
Oh. I'm at the 1.04. John at the 1.08. So this will be good. We'll be kind of evenly spread out. Nice. Almost the picks here. So we'll see what happens. Okada, you're on the clock, my friend. 1.01. What are you going to do? Um. Uh, well, I'm going to draft Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is not a very hard choice. Explain um, to listeners, though, your mindset. I know it's obvious he's yes. the best player in fantasy so but it doesn't change him in, in super flex to you right no no listen do i want to get a quarterback probably in the first three rounds maybe ideally because after that it's going to start to get a little messy but but if i have the 101 am i taking mahomes or lamar jackson no lamar jackson might have been worth the 101 in a super flex last year but as we've talked about many many times you're not going to get that those numbers repeated he's going to regress a little bit and unless Mahomes pulls off another 5,050, he's not worth the 101 either. So in a PPR league, it's Christian McCaffrey. I'm not taking a quarterback in the first half of the first round for sure. So this was a, a relatively easy choice. And in case you were wondering, there's no running back that compares, and I don't want a receiver with the 101. So yes, it's CMC. Perfect. All right. After your pick, we had a kind of a surprise here. We had Alvin Kamara. Go with the um, 1.02, then Saquon Barkley. That puts me on the clock here at the 1.04. Um, I obviously value quarterbacks highly in Superflex. However, in a dynasty league, I'm much more likely to go in on an elite quarterback early because you're going to have them for 10 to 15 years. In this sort of format where it's redraft, I'm not necessarily worried about that. So I'm going to actually just take the, the next running back here in the tier. That is, of course, Ezekiel Elliott. And I will get my quarterbacks here moving forward. After Zeke, we had our first wide receiver in Michael Thomas, then Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, who we talked about a lot on the last show. Go back and check that out. And then 1.08, John, you're on the clock, my friend. Um, I'm having fantasy pros problems, so I'm refreshing. And okay, I'm good. Um, so <laughs> we're here at the 1.08. Um, and fantasy pros is still being very okay. Settle down, fantasy pros. You're good. Okay, we fine. Fantasy we're pros, good. You guys Fantasy right. pros, where we we're do good. our mock drafts. We're good. All right, <laughs> we we're try fine. to do our mock drafts. So, to me, generally, I am a wait on a quarterback guy. Um, but if Patrick Mahomes is available in the late first, Ooh. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes. Um, I'm going with it. Patrick Mahomes has won me back to back super flex. Uh, redraft leagues uh, the same league back-to-back -back years drafting him early has worked for me and redraft at the late first round i'm gonna do it again and we're gonna go with that so i'm back on the clock here into the second round uh it went after me derrick henry josh jacobs tyree kill devont bay uh hurts uh deandre hopkins austin eckler feels early Kenyon Bit. Drake also feels early a little bit um julio jones which so would have been my pick if he got back to me um but looking at who's available here there are some serious top tier talents available at the wide receiver and still at the quarterback position um the running back position there is not a whole lot in terms of top tier mm -hmm. so i'm inclined for value's sake to take a wide receiver here. But it's also really enticing to think about potentially seeing what happens with the two best quarterbacks. Um, oh. and, how that would, and how that would potentially look. Ooh. Hey, Whoa. I think I'm, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to oh, take Lamar Jackson. Shoot. I'm going to double down on quarterback in round one and two with the uh, top two quarterbacks in, in uh, fantasy football. And we're going to see what happens. Wow. Very interesting there. Uh, we just talked about Lamar Jackson on our most recent mock, which would have been now three episodes ago at this point. Right. I made that our, our cut up for our social media. You can find that on the Instagram. And I asked you guys the question. I said, why shouldn't fantasy owners take Lamar Jackson in the second round of their single quarterback leagues? And you guys said the value isn't there. He's not going to repeat. John, I'm going to kick it back to you. What makes the difference here in Superflex? You, you value quarterbacks, obviously higher yeah. does it change the scoring outlook for you versus other positional players running back wide receiver etc um well it does because i think that lamar jackson is going to give me more points on my roster period than anyone left that was on the board even if he regresses 
400 rushing yards if he increases his touchdown passes by like four it's it's gonna balance a lot of that out he's in my opinion because of his rushing ability i don't see any any realm like his floor to me is like the quarterback five mm-hmm. and and if hurt. he's a top yeah if he's a top five quarterback unless he gets hurt um, in Superflex, just the positional advantage alone. I mean, having those two quarterbacks, Mahomes and Lamar, it's Great. like 60 fantasy points a week, roughly, from my two quarterbacks. So I feel confident about that, and, and we'll see how it goes. I have not done this yet in a mock. So we're just going to play with this, and I'm probably going to hate my running backs in about four <laughs> rounds, but we're going to see what happens. The running back guy is going to hate his roster, and I can't wait for it. Uh, yeah, I'm back great. on the clock. After John's pick, we had Chris Godwin, Miles Sanders, and Allen Robinson go. Puts me on the clock at the 2.09. I'm looking at a couple quarterbacks here, Mr. Dak Prescott and Kyler Murray on the board. Obviously, uh, second-tier quarterbacks this season for us. Running backs, I'm looking at Nick Chubb, potentially, or Aaron Jones. Wide receiver, the position is just so deep. I feel like I'm probably going to pass on receiver. So for me, it comes down to the running back or the quarterbacks. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take my second running back here. We talked about this player a ton. We don't need to beat a dead horse, but I believe Nick Chubb is still going to be a running back one in fantasy. I will take him. I'm saying that all offseason. I'm not going to change now. So I'll take Nick Chubb here at the 2.09. Pair him with Zeke. You guys kidding me? I love it. That was dirty. Oh. Oh, Kata is upset. He did not get Aaron Jones or Kenny Galladay, but he's mm. back on the clock here at the 2.12. Yeah, I was really hoping to get Aaron Jones. I was so excited when you named your two picks, and they were not the quarterback I wanted to take and not the running back I wanted to take. Really? But you didn't then... want to take Dak or Kyler? No, no, no. You didn't decide to take the quarterback that I wanted oh, to take. I, I am going to take that. that one because he's mm. still there. But I was really hoping with my other turn pick to get Aaron Jones he is now gone, and I don't believe in the Fantasy Pros tiers that we're looking at, which, by the way, guys, if you haven't used Fantasy Pros mock drafts, very cool. They break down the rankings in tiers. It's very nice, except when we can't figure out how to use it. Um, <laughs> but they say there's three running backs left in tier three. I disagree. It's a hot mess. So, uh, like, I could go get Leonard Fournette who, if he's a Jaguar, is probably going to return RB1 value, I think, maybe, turn of the RB1, RB2 area. But it's just not very attractive. And I already have Christian McCaffrey, which makes me feel a little bit better. So I think I'm going to take a receiver here. But before I do that, I'm going to take the quarterback that I'm just very, very happy is still there. That's Dak Prescott. He is probably going to end up as my QB2 heading into 2020. Uh, I think he's going to absolutely ball out. He already did it last year, and then he got a the addition of CeeDee Lamb, uh, an improved, I believe, Michael Gallup going into year three, four, three. Three. Thank four? You. three. three. No, three. three. Yeah. But he's just so good for year three receiver. That's like he's he going to year four. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, give me Dak Prescott. I get myself what I consider an ultra-elite quarterback. I love that. Then, like I said, I'm going to avoid these running backs because none of them stand out to me enough, and I'm going to go wide receiver instead. So there's a few guys in this tier that I really like. Um, Mike Evans, listen, he's been great. I think he's going to take a step back this year under Tom Brady, so I'm going to skip over him. Juju Smith-Schuster, probably the highest upside of any guy left because he has the ability, if that offense is, is going, and he steps up to the wide receiver one role to be the wide receiver one, in my opinion. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. But I'm going really to go gothy stuff right there. I'm going to go a different Street. direction. I'm going to go with DJ Moore here and take a guy I think yeah. is a little bit safer yeah. compared to those other two guys. I think this guy is the highest lock to be a top 15 receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and get the safety of that in a PPR league. DJ Moore. Dude, I absolutely love it. Uh, shout out to Debro, our good friend of the show, Derek Brown. He said, I'll put it on the sticky note, man. DJ Moore, no matter what. Um, I ran through projections. Yeah. I updated my rankings. They're not on the site yet. We're, we should release our redraft rankings soon, guys. Um, yeah. Wide receiver seven for me this Woo-hoo! year. Like, I'm so in on DJ Moore this year. 
PPR, full PPR league? Yes, I love that pick, Okada. He, I was going to be taking him for sure if he fell to me, which he did not. Uh, after your selections there of Dak and DJ Moore, Clyde edwards helaire and Travis Kelsey come off the board. That puts me back up on the clock here, looking at quarterback once again. Kyler is still there. Um, I've got two running backs that I feel really, really solid about. Um, no one that stands out to me necessarily in a tier that I would like to take them there at the running back position. But I'll tell you what, guys, wide receiver... We've said it time after time on these mocks. Yep. It's just so deep that I'm going to see what happens if I pass on receiver yet again in round three and see what my team looks like. So I right. will take Kyler Murray here as my QB one. I have him ranked nice. as my QB four going into the season. Um, okay. Like him a lot this year. After Kyler, we have Adam Thielen, uh, Mike Evans, Leonard Fournette, John Helmkamp back on the clock. That is me. Um, I am here. This is true. This is also true. This is very true. Um, well, this is interesting. So is I, <laughs> I really, I really hope that Fournette was going to make it back, and you with the pick before me, and that makes me upset. Ah, uh, you hate. Um, to you hate to see it. So let me kind of take a look at the depth at running back here. Um, running back at this point gets. A little dodgy. Um, we're getting out of the top tier. We have Todd Gurley, who could potentially be fantastic, or his knees could collapse in week six, um, which is a lot of gamble. Um, I'm, you I'm risk thinking it for the biscuit, man. you got to risk it for the biscuit. I think that I'm pretty much just going to punt on running back in this draft. Like interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait a few rounds. It's and then PPR, some, so that's more viable. Yep, get some get some high upside guys uh, there. I'm trying to see where are more of the wider series. Come on, let's get this let's get this going. Get get it together, John. Um, wider series. True. There we go. Agree. Agreed, John. Get your s together. Okay, so wide receivers that are still on the board: Juju, Amari Cooper, Nah, Odell, maybe. Um, Keenan Allen and Bobby Trees are still available. Um, Cortland Sutton, I like. There's so many wide receivers here that I still really enjoy. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to take a wide receiver one, for I'm thinking I'm going to go high upside first and then get stability later because there's so many players here that I feel confident about as being a wide receiver two all year long. Terry McLaurin, Stephon Diggs, DK Metcalf, Jarvis Landry. There's so many guys I can come back for that I'm going to go high upside here. and I'm going to take Juju. I'm going to risk it with him. Nice. Um, with Big Ben coming back, this is redraft after all. I'm not worried about Big Ben long term. I just need him to show up for one year and for Juju to have a really high target share, which I think he will. Um, I've been you know, very vocal as not being the biggest Juju truther. I'm warming up to him a little off of like my early offseason takes. He's still not as high as some other people, but I like him fine enough. Um, and I, I do agree with Okada that he has a high ceiling, not in my opinion, wide receiver one ceiling, but he could easily be a top six guy um, if he reaches the ceiling. So I'm going to go Juju. I like it. We are finally brainwashing him, Okada. We just got to talk about him more and good things will happen. After True. John's pick of Juju Smith-Schuster, we had George Kittle, Odell Beckham, Todd Gurley, Mark Andrews, and then starting the fourth round, Chris Carson, Cooper Cup at the 4.02. I like that value. 4.03 is Zach Ertz, then Amari Cooper. John, back to you, man. Yeah, so really not all that upset about what happened there between my picks. I'm glad Amari Cooper's gone so that he's not going to tempt me. Um, feel free to get that out of my face. So like I said, I, I went a little risky but high upside with Juju. So I'm I'm going to go super stable, super safe, someone that could be a high-end wide receiver two, potentially a wide receiver one. I talk about him a lot. I love him a lot. I'm taking Bobby Trees. Shout out to now patron Mike. Yes! Who has mm. been uh, not happy about get this nickname. You, get you some Bobby Trees. We will Mike. talk about that in the Patreon chat. Shout out to Mike, uh, newest patron in the, the group chat there. For All the right, well, uh, listeners who don't know who Bobby Trees is, it's Robert, Robert Woods. Wood. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. Just in case listeners. we have any new it's, listeners. It's so ingrained. 
it's if you so don't know by now, uh, we can't help you. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. After Robert Woods, Calvin Ridley goes, Keenan Allen, then Melvin Gordon at the 4.08. I have on the clock here at the 4.09. Oh, I have some decisions to make. Uh, at the tight end position, I don't see anyone in a tier that I'm willing to go up and get in the fourth round. So I'm going to pass on that position completely. Wide receiver, we've got some guys that I really like. Tyler Lockett, we've talked about. A.J. Brown, I'm always a fan of. Terry McLaurin is uh, my dude. Jarvis Landry is the safest wide receiver, too, in fantasy football. Yeah. But at running back, we have guys like Le'Veon Bell, Jonathan Taylor, James Conner, David Johnson. Guys, in the fourth round, I'm looking for a player that I can kind of plug and play any time throughout the season that I feel confident about, that I feel safe about. I'm going to take Tyler Lockett here. I've been higher than consensus on him all offseason. I'm going to continue to be. Same. In my article, I wrote up for uh, the Patreon crew for the, the sports betting tier. I put in there, and this is a freebie, I put in Russell Wilson at plus 1,200 odds to win MVP. If things go wrong for this rushing attack, the defense is going to be the worst it's been in the last decade. Yeah, Russ could legitimately set the NFL on fire this year. Like, I honestly could see it happening. He's oh, got please. two of the best receivers in football. Give me Tyler Lockett all day. After that pick, we have Cortland Sutton, then A.J. Brown, two uh, young up-and-coming wide receivers. Okada, we're back to you, man. 4.12. Who are you going to take? Uh, well, my first pick is a lock because I've been w watching to see if this running back would drop to me over the 22 picks between my very right. far apart picks. Um, and he did, and that's Mark Ingram, the second. Oh, screw you. Yeah, nice, reliable, steady. Know he's going to be an RB2 every week. Give me 8 to 10 touchdowns. Oh. Give me 1,200 rushing yards. Oh. oh, it feels clean. It feels good. It feels dirty. <laughs> oh, Give me Mark Ingram dirty. as my second <laughs> running back. And it then things, things get very interesting with my back of the turn pick because I'm looking at legitimately at every position here there's a running back i still like he would be my rb3 so i'm probably gonna lean away from that there's a quarterback that i know we all like and so does everybody in fact he just got talked about would be a very good super flex for me but there's also a bevy of wide receivers we've talked about those a ton of mm -hmm. them that are still viable and there are some tight ends who i think there's one tight end that might be a tier above the rest and because of that reason, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take him. And I think this is the first time I've taken this guy in a mock. It is going to be Darren Waller. I'm going to draft mm -hmm. me my tight end in Darren Waller. Help round out my roster a little bit because I know that the wide receiver depth is so good. Even though I only have one in DJ Moore, I feel fine about getting my wide receiver two in like the seventh round and him still being okay. Whereas if a couple more tight ends go, I'm falling down to the Jared Cook tier and I don't want to do that. Fair enough. After Mr. Waller, we have Jonathan Taylor off the board and then Devontae Parker. Guys, we talked about it with Derek Brown. We talked about the stacks in redraft. People don't do it enough. Russell Wilson, I just mentioned, is going to set the NFL on fire this year. And if this stack hits, boys, I am making it rain come end of the year with all my winnings in this fake league. So I'm going to take Russell Pacific Wilson Northwest. <laughs> to pair him with Kyler Murray. Are you kidding? Yes, please. That's dirty. After Russ, we have Deshaun Watson. Then another Seahawk, DK Metcalf. Then T.Y. Hilton at the 5.07. John, we're back to you, man. Oh, Jonathan Taylor. What could have been? What could have been? What could have Sad. been? Um, I love I love that Wilson Lockett or Wilson DK Metcalf stack. Um, wherever you can get that stack. I agree with you. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible this year. Um, truly upset Jonathan Taylor is gone. Didn't expect the computer to take him there. Um, so that sucks. So I'm looking at my roster. I have Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, filthy. Uh, Juju and Bobby Trees, love it. Um, I don't have any running backs. Um, I kind of need one. So I'm I'm wondering if now's the time to do it. I mean, this is why you don't draft with your friends because they take the people that you like, like Mark Ingram. Mm. Um, <laughs> that, that's upsetting. That would have been a perfect, it perfect would. play would have uh, Raheem Mostert's so on good. the board John ha! Uh, oh, Raheem must start um yeah. I see him I do I'm let's see here what am I doing what am I gonna do what am I gonna what do? are you gonna do John? Livion Bell James <laughs> Connor David Johnson Devin Singletary David Montgomery 
No, 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 no. Don't like any of it. Um, Let's skip it so again. So I'm going to punt won't. again. Screw those running backs, man. Who needs them? Yep. I'm just going to kick that can further down the road. Um, I am going to take my third wide receiver um, because I like a couple of the young players that are here. Um, I kind of feel like spitting in the other two's eye because they did it to me. And I'm going to take Terry McLaurin. Oh, as my third wide receiver. I like that. that. I like that a lot of the flex play. Yep. I'm good Uh, with that. You know, I won't complain about that. The only only thing I'm upset about is not getting him on my roster. So I love the pick. Exactly. David Johnson after uh, Terry McLaurin, then Evan Ingram, DJ Chark, James Conner, Marquise Brown, Tyler Higby at the 6.02, kind of early. Matt Ryan, then Jarvis Landry at the 6.04. Phenomenal value there on Jarvis. John, back to you, man. Can we draft players from the cheat sheet area? Does that work? Like if you're going Uh, across the top? I don't know what you mean. I believe you can. There's a little plus sign next to the player's name. If you highlight them, does it? Oh, it does. Okay, that's cool. That's nice to see. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go upside at the running back position here, finally, um, in the sixth round without taking a running back yet is is ridiculous for me. Um, Normally, I have like three or four at this point. Um, oh, look at that. Clyde edwards has gone. That's lovely. I didn't see that. Um, so what we're going <laughs> to do, <laughs> yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust accordingly because that's what you do when you're in a draft. I am going to take, I'm actually going to go safety a little bit on this pick and it might not seem like it's the safest pick in the world, but I think that David Montgomery has a very, very stable role like i i think that he's he's locked in as being that guy i think that he's going to be an rb2 or better uh just about every single week um i think that he has the potential for a breakout campaign um so i am going to go david montgomery it's not letting me take him i don't know why i'm trying to click that plus sign next to him and it's not letting me um boo that, I'm not sure. <laughs> that might add him to your queue to be honest oh, with you. i got it okay i'm gonna go david montgomery here uh, in the sixth round and getting a running back two that I feel confident about as being at least that. And with a stable bell cow ish role, because I think the role and the opportunity is going to be there for him. And if he can step it up and if they understand that their quarterback is doo doo butter and decide to actually give David Montgomery the ball, like they should, um, I think that he could outperform his ADP. Alrighty. Fair enough. After, your selection of David Montgomery, which, by the way, there's like seven or eight running backs I can think of that are going to get 250 carries this year. He's one of them. Uh, yep. We talked about it a little bit on the, the teams to fade this year. It's not necessarily anything against David Montgomery as far as fading him. His volume is safe. Um, the depth chart is not scary. Ryan Nall is their backup right. outside of three Cohen. So he's going to touch the ball a ton. I think he he's a guy that even though we talked about him as a fade um, last episode, I might be bumping him up my ranks. He's just so safe. Uh, this yeah, season. and that's and that's just it. He's so uh, for for being the hot commodity as a rookie in last year's off season, he's so unsexy this year. Like it's amazing the difference in tone surrounding him, even though literally nothing changed for his role. He has no competition at all for yeah. his role. He's locked in as being the running back one, other than Tariq Cohen catching passes. He's a he, Tariq Cohen's a slot wide receiver. He is not a running back. And it's going to be David Montgomery that gets 250 plus catches, should return a thousand yards, six to eight touchdown. I, I'm I'm good with that. Yep, for sure. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of different positions here: wide receiver mostly and running back. The wide receiver again, the position is just insanely deep. There's no one that I see in a tier here that I'm very very excited to go up and take. So I'm going to add to my my running back depth chart here, and I'm going to go ahead and take Devin Singletary. I know that the upside isn't necessarily extremely high, but when you have guys like Ezekiel Elliott and Nick Chubb as your starters, Devin Singletary is a fine RB3 on your roster that you can flex any given week. Hopefully can become more than an RB2, but we'll see. I think that the upside's capped, but safety there for sure with Singletary. Uh, after that pick, we had Stefan Diggs and Drew Brees go off the clock. Okada, back to you, man. 6.12. 
So before I make this pick, I do want to say, Bets, I think Singletary's upside is actually bigger than his... Well, it's as big as his floor is low, if that right. makes sense. In the sense, or in the, in the case that if Zach Moss turns out to be just crap and the That's Bills true. realize this and he, like, fumbles the ball a couple times on the goal line or just does nothing and they decide that he's not going to be worth giving eight carries a game and goal line work... All of a sudden, Devin Singletary becomes the bell cow in one of the top rushing offenses in the league with a running quarterback. And I think he could be an RB1 pretty easily in that case. Now, the likelihood of that maybe isn't too high because I do think Zach Moss will get some work. But I just want to throw that out there. Now, All right, fair enough. as for my picks, I have had them locked and loaded for the past probably seven minutes, <laughs> almost the entirety <laughs> of the time between my picks. Because I knew these two guys would be here, and I love getting them uh, for the team setup that I have. The first pick is going to be a wide receiver, because I like him, and I'll save the quarterback for second. And it's going to be Julian Edelman. I have talked about him a little bit before. Shocking. I think I might have taken him in a previous mock. Oh, I love the Patriots. Listen, guys. They're so good. Listen! <laughs> wide receiver 10 last year in PPR. 100 receptions. Okay. Oh, okay. no, Tom Brady is gone. Okay. Their chemistry <laughs> its going to be ruined. Listen, who else is Jared Stidham going to throw the ball to? And this is not a Mike Evans type player. This is not a Devontae Parker type player where if you don't have a good quarterback, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. Okay. This is a Julian okay. Edelman. He is going to get 140 okay. plus targets. Okay. <laughs> He Again? is going to catch 90-plus <laughs> balls for sure. Oh, Bets, I don't know what the line is on that. Figure it out and put some money down on it because he is going to rock the reception status this year. And in a PPR league, yes, please. I mean, the targets are there. So give me Julian Edelman as my wide receiver two. And then while I did consider going for a wide receiver three here because there's a couple others that I like, I want to lock in what I see to be a top end quarterback for my super flex. He's my QB seven. I like him more than one, two, three, four guys that have gone already. And that is Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to lock in Aaron Rodgers. We've talked about him a little bit this off season as well. I believe in him. I believe in this offense. I believe in the bounce back. The touchdown regression is as obvious to me as Lamar Jackson's regression is. Uh, in the other direction, because Aaron Rodgers had one of the best touchdown rates in the NFL history, not just in the NFL when he's been around. Uh, and it's been down for some reason for the last couple of years. I think it's going to bounce back up. He gets the Jordan Love spike or whatever you want to call it. Hate tour. Uh, he is going to come out and rock the revenge this tour. Revenge tour. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to have an incredible combo between Dak and Aaron Rodgers. I would not be surprised if I led the league in passing and touchdowns, uh, yards and touchdowns between those two. So, you know, that's a thing. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh, Okada, you are a silly man. After your pick of Rodgers, we had two quarterbacks, Carson Wentz and Matthew Stafford off the board. Fellas, I'm on the clock here at the 7.04, but before I pick, this is a good spot, seventh inning stretch. Let's pause for a second. Let's thank yeah. the sponsor of today's show, that is nuts and more. And we haven't really talked about these guys in a while. We came on strong with nuts and more in like February, March, because it was a new sponsor. People were excited. And I kind of forgot like how good these products were. Also, forgot how good pe like these people were. They literally sent us for free, each of us, nuts and more delivered right to our door. Guys, it was so convenient. We got two full peanut butter jars. We got uh, travel snack packs. Also, I took one to work today. Put it on uh, some toast. It was perfect, guys. I also Ooh. tried the uh, mocha cappuccino peanut butter spread with my coffee this morning. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. So, so good, guys. And okay, now, the best part about okay. that, okay, is that our <laughs> listeners are going to get a discount for these awesome products. They're healthy, packed with protein, support that active lifestyle. What you got to do is you got to go to nutsandmore.com and put it on the screen right here for YouTube. Nutsandmore.com. Now, backslash write this down okay nutsandmore.com okay backslash question mark ref equals red shirts we're gonna put the exact link in the description of this podcast if you're watching on on youtube it'll be in there if you're on spotify stitcher apple Podcasts, whatever it's on there it's on the website 
but check out nuts and more guys and another code red shirts going to get 10 percent off your order today you will not be upset man i want some nuts and more right now <laughs> so good same all right boys i am back up on the clock here 7.04 i've got two stud quarterbacks i've got some running backs now i've got three of them i'm gonna start adding to my wide receiver depth and we've talked about this player quite a bit on this podcast we've talked about it with okada he's really selling me on michael gallup guys i, I don't mm, see yeah. nice i picture. don't see how cd lamb this year takes over for michael gallup i can see it in the future maybe but gallup last year went over a thousand yards and i kind of forgot about that with that right. prescott's volume a, a high passing um volume offense Michael Gallup's going to go over a thousand yards here, and you're getting him in the seventh round. Yes, please. Woo. After Gallup, we have Gardner Minshew, kind of early, to be honest. With wow. Gardner. Jared Goff, then Daniel Jones. We got some quarterbacks going. We have, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six quarterbacks already in the seventh round. John, you going to keep it going, man? Quick no, it's pause. nice that I already have two. Quick no, note. Before, well, I, well, in fact, while John makes figure out what he wants to do, uh, can I just say that this is super cool by Fantasy Pros' draft mock draft thing? They took Gardner Minshew before one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight quarterbacks that are ranked above Gardner Minshew. And I think that's just super cool that it's like, you know, if you have a Jaguars fan in your league, this is the exact kind of thing that would happen. It's very fascinating. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, I it's mean, nice that they mixed up the pros. algorithm. Yeah, it's nice that yeah. they mixed up the algorithm so that it's not just straight down their tier yep. rankings. That like there weird. are other quarterbacks that are available, but there are also people that are like, he's great for fantasy. We yeah. think he's gonna be fantastic. Mustache, so like jean shorts. Yeah. But guys, the it thing makes is, sense. like, I love it. I'm actually rising a lot on Gardner Minshew. I like, like him too. I, I wrote not up this much, the but... No, not this much, but <laughs> He was on pace for over 400 yards last year rushing. There was only an elite group that did it. Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, uh, and there's a fourth one that I'm forgetting. Russian quarterback. Someone help me. There you go. Kyler Murray. Thank you. Mm. He's right there. Like That is a cheat code in fantasy. I'm rising on Gardner quite a bit. I know John has his picks ready because we've given him so much time. I do yeah. have my picks ready, actually. I'm I'm ready to go here, and and I'm gonna reach it. because it's it's kind of what I've put myself into by <laughs> going the way that I did. Um, I'm going to take a rookie running back. Mm. Um, I'm not gonna take a rookie running back that I think most of you think that I'm gonna take. Ooh, um, I'm can gonna we take guess? Someone... Yeah, go. Well, the one I would initially have guessed would be Cam Akers, but now I feel like you might go for Keyshawn Vaughn. I'm going for Keyshawn thing. Vaughn. Uh -huh. um, I'm going with the Tampa Bay running back. I I, like I trust that offense. I trust that he's a lot better than Ronald Jones. Um, <laughs> listen, okay, we, we have to talk about this. We got to talk about those Ronald Jones workout videos. That yes. we're making around. Like, yes. can we please, can we please just for a minute, like, what? Why are you hyping this? <laughs> he got thrown a pass right into his gut. He caught it with his belly button. And then he has a retired, like, 37-year-old DB on him. And he puts the ball out like this and doesn't make him miss. Four feet from his body for people not watching the YouTube. Just puts, yeah, like, puts it out there worse than Shady McCoy in his prime. Like, oh, way, yeah. he was way, way out. out here. <laughs> like, like it, it was almost like posting up in basketball when the guy's like backing in on him and holding the yep. ball like up. Yep. like that's what he what Ronald Jones looked like he was doing and then oh he didn't make the retired cornerback miss in space and then they post a subsequent video of him with no defense at all <laughs> running a fade route for Ronald Jones running a fade route on an yep. offense with I see it. Gronk, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, but no, no, Ronald Jones is going to run the fade in the end zone. No defense, and he doesn't get his feet down in bounds. <laughs> Shocking. Said, he was out. Like, dude. Trash. He, and oh, there's people that are like, so sorry, hashtag Ronald. Rojo season. I'm like, no, you're not sharing this as hype for Ronald Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're not. So that aside, Ronald Jones is trash <laughs> in pass protection, trash at catching mm. the ball. Mm. Keyshawn Vaughn had a very, very high graded pass protection uh, metric in college. He was very good at it for Vanderbilt. Played in the SEC, is a physical runner. He's tough. 
He's going to keep Brady upright, which is going to be really important. Uh, Ronald Jones is going to yep. miss one one linebacker, yep. and Brady's going to look at him like you like what? The? He's going to cuss him out. <laughs> what the what hell? Is that you doing me? <laughs> He's going to cuss him out <laughs> so <laughs> fast, and he's going to look at Bruce Arians and be like, get this dude off yep. of me. Like, <laughs> get him out. out of here. And then it's straight doghouse. It's going to be Keyshawn Vaughn. I, I, I think that Vaughn has a very high ceiling early in the season um, in this offense, which I expect to put up a lot of points. Um, and I think that he's going to catch a lot of passes in a Tom Brady offense. So I'm, I'm going with, uh, with Keyshawn Vaughn here as my running back, too. Oh, sorry. I think Rojo. we can safely not talk about Rojo for the rest of the offseason at this point. I think we're yeah. done. Like, Everything is red. Like, Crap. Yeah. Get him out. Well, not good. Uh, after Keyshawn Bond, we have Ryan Tannehill, Baker Mayfield, man, the quarterbacks, Drew Locke, Ben oh, Roethlisberger, Teddy Bridgewater, Philip Rivers. Oh. Um, man, we're all going to probably regret not having that third quarterback at this point. Uh, Debo yeah. Samuel, Kirk Cousins. John, back to you, man. I, yeah, that, that quarterback run is something else. I thought I had another round or two before getting a third, which, you know, even though I have the two that I have, you want to have a third. You got to have a third on your got to have a third super flex for those bye weeks for potential injury for whatever. So, yeah, that quarterback run. I mean, someone go count them in the last round. It feels like there's been 10 that have gone off the board. Um, I'm back on the clock here. Um, there are some very interesting players available to me, some wide receivers that kind of keep slipping a certain wide receiver that we've talked about a lot that goes underrated a ton. Um, mm. Mm. But, and I'm very, of those. there's a couple of those. I am very tempted to go that route, but I also am very tempted to go running back again. Um, I already have three wide receivers. I'm two at running back two quarterbacks. I'm punning on tight end at this point. Um, I think I'm going to go back to the running back position and I'm going to take a little bit of a controversial uh, running back maybe because oh. of what some others have, have said and what they think. And this might have to do with that with a bets bets. Um, oh. Kareem hunt. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take him because I think that his PPR value is going to be fantastic. I think he's going to be a standalone flex play. Um, because of what he can do in the passing game in that offense. I think he's going to see some work. I think he's going to be on the field. I think he's going to contribute a lot. And and I don't think it's going to take much for him to be putting up, honestly, very similar PPR fantasy points to what Nick Chubb is going to give. Like, if he maybe puts up five fantasy points a game less than Nick Chubb, I will believe it, and I'm getting him, like, seven rounds later. All righty. Fair enough. After... Your selection there with Cream Hunt, AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, both Bengals receivers off the board. Then Deontay Johnson, offseason hype man himself at the 8.08. I'm on the clock at the 8.09. And guys, here's the quarterbacks that are left. By the way, John, 14 uh, quarterbacks went over the last 17 picks before your pick. So there's wow. a We have left on the board right now. This is this is the list, guys. Okay. Joe Burrow, Jimmy G, Sam Darnold, Derek Carr, Dwayne Haskins. Jared Stidham, and then guys that we don't know who's starting. Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua, Tyrod and, and Justin Herbert. I mean, it's it's gross. I'm going to lock up a third reliable quarterback here. I'm going to go with the board, make sure I don't miss out. I'm going to take Jimmy G. Guys, absolute underrated quarterback. Really good deep passing metrics. Um, I think George Kittle, guys, this year is going to. Yeah, that wasn't great. I'm going to absolutely put myself out there and say George Kittle's catching at least eight touchdown passes this year. The dude was a monster in college with touchdowns. He's had no more than five in any season. Played with injury last year. We love Deba. We love Brandon Ayuk. Off, awesome scheme there. Great offensive line. Jimmy G is your third, third quarterback. is totally fine. I'll take him there. And after Jimmy G, we have Joe Burrow off the board. Then Marvin Jones. Okada, are you going to take your third quarterback? Or are you going to pass? I'm not bets because two reasons. One, I don't have someone in my flex spot yet, and I don't feel great about taking a bench quarterback over a starting player. Uh, so I will probably just have to take the dregs of the non-starters or the questionable starters when it comes back around to me. Two, uh, I only have two running backs, which is not a lot. It is less than three. I'm not sure if you're it aware of this. Less than three. Okay, and yeah, that's right. three... I love the value of two, two guys. Two, a two, a three. 
<laughs> two guys left on the board are calling my name. So I'm going to take them. The first one is a wide receiver who will probably be in my flex spot unless this other guy that I'm about to take just beats him out. It's Christian Kirk. Yeah, it is. John talked about, about him earlier uh, this offseason. I believe he was a breakout candidate was on that show. Yep. I fully agree with that. I think he can be in a PPR league. 75, 80 catches maybe? Yep. I can see it. Yeah. So th- that that's pretty nice. If the sure. if the Cardinals run the kind of uh, speed of play that we expect and are top five again in plays, there's going to be a lot of targets to go around. And I think Christian Kirk can get quite a few of them and be an excellent young receiver. And then I'm going to take my own advice, guys, because the very first thing I said on this show, besides something about it being Friday, was take James, James White. White. It is a PPR league. We are at RB28. There is no way that James White finishes lower than RB28 in a PPR I, league. And there's probably no way he finishes lower than RB24, to be honest. This is a smash pick. James White is going to... Listen, he's on my bench right now, but he's going to make it into my starting lineup probably half the weeks of the year at least. And he's going to put out points easily. I have Julian Edelman and James White. I have all the catches for the Patriots, literally. Yes, John. Uh, uh, More fantasy points in PPR this season, Kareem Hunt or James White? James White. (sighs) Yeah, James White, unless something happens to Chubb. Hmm. Certainly... Certainly, you know, lower floor for Kareem Hunt, higher ceiling, and James White's just right there in the True. middle, safest guy in the league, but no ceiling. True, true. His his is much more predictable, much safer. I, I yes. totally agree with that. Yeah. All right, boys. Uh, we talked about the running backs here just a second ago with Okada. After James White, it was Will Fuller, then Raheem Mostert. If <laughs> Kenny Makers falls to you in the ninth round. Yeah. Yep. You got on the it. way back. I don't have a lot of wide receivers depth right now, but at this point, I'll just get depth players to fill in around him. I'll take Cam Akers as my running back four, running back 29 value. Yes, please. After Cam Akers off the board, we have John Brown, Brandon Cooks. I think that's great value on Brandon Cooks. Then Justin Jefferson here at the 9.07. John, back to you, man. Ooh. Oh, I love that. Justin mm. Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. Mm. John Brown and Justin Jefferson were both in my queue. By the really? way, Justin That's Jefferson, up. first rookie receiver picked by the computer. They've been listening to the Red Shirts Fantasy they Football have, Podcast. They are smart. These people know what's up. Um, in redraft, absolutely 100%. Justin yep. Jefferson, I think, should be the first rookie wide receiver off the board. Um, so my roster right now has three running backs and three wide receivers and two quarterbacks. Quarterbacks remaining at this point. Wow, this is actually a really interesting decision and a decision that I didn't think that I would I didn't think I would struggle making this choice between these two players if you asked me six months ago. Sam Darnold or Dwayne Haskins? Oh, well, that's I not a good question for me. Uh, I think it's I, Haskins. I think it might be. Yes. Like, yeah, that's sad. That's, that is that sad is really for Darnold. Sad. Oh, that's not even really sad, fault, dude. It's not his fault. <laughs> it's not. It's not absolutely. It's it has nothing to do with him. They're uh, ruining the him. Jets. The Jets are just absolutely wasting Sam Darnold. I liked him so much as a prospect. Um, I'm I'm so sad for him. Um, but I have Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, like two of the most elite, safest quarterbacks in the league. I'm gonna throw Dwayne Haskins here on my bench as the third quarterback. Um, for someone that you know, if he has a lower floor, so be it. He's he's got the upside. Dude's been putting in work this offseason, by the way. Like he he's looking like, really good. He's looking very felt. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's doing a, a great job. He's showing the team that he he wants to step up, take the leadership, and uh, and run with it. So I, I think he's doing a good job. Like it. After Haskins, we have Cohen, uh three Cohen, Sterling Shepard, DeAndre Swift, Darius Geis, then two defenses, San Fran and Pittsburgh. Philip Lindsay, Tyrod Taylor at the 10.04. John, back to you, man. This is interesting. Um, okay, I'm going to take a look at the wide receivers that are here. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's take a look at the tight ends that are here. Um, oh, yeah. Ones. Okay. No, yeah. There are some tight yeah. ends here that I'm, that I'm liking. This is a great I didn't draft. 
they really did. There's some tight ends here that I'm really liking. Both Austin Hooper and Hunter Henry are available. Mm-hmm. Um, Okada thinks that Hunter Henry is going to be the tight end one with 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so um, I'm not quite that bold. Just that. But <laughs> by the way, uh, that is what we like to call hashtag sarcasm. Uh, he does not think that, but he does think he has a chance at a, what did you say? A, thou- a thousand and eight? Yes, a thousand and eight. Very yeah. much so. I think that's a little bullish, but I do like Hunter Henry and his involvement in that offense. I, I think that he's going to make himself very friendly to the to the quarterbacks, um, which, in my opinion, will be Justin Herbert. By like, He should start the season, but if not, it'll be like week three, week four. Um, so I'm going to go Hunter Henry here as my tight end. Nice. Yeah, I'm not a big Hunter, Hunter Henry guy this year, but in the 10th round, that's yeah. great value. Great value. Ooh, um, a couple apparently more people... Wins. Yeah, People know what, like John's the smart dude. They're like, I'm gonna do what John does. Uh, the computer <laughs> went Rob Gronkowski, then Jared Cook, then Austin Hooper. So three tight ends off the board. That puts me in a spot where the tight end position is. Yep. I, I, I'm just gonna punt at this point. Yep. Like it's it's not really worth reaching for. Um, well, well, hold on, before, is, before you give your before you, you give your explanation there. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on Hayden Hurst? Yeah, Okada and I talked about that in our free agency show uh, like two weeks ago. You know, the opportunity is there, no doubt about it. But in my initial ranks, he comes in at tight end 14. I don't I don't know that he's good yet. Like, I don't know that he is actually going to be a productive player. We just haven't seen right. it. And there's a reason he was beat out by Mark Andrews, who was a third-round pick, versus Hayden Hurst being a first-round pick. Um, but he'll have every opportunity. I think he's going to have a ton of targets. Matt Ryan's hyping him up. I might move him up into tight end one territory before the draft. Um but at this point, I, I'm going to kind of fade him and, and see what happens here with my roster. So I'll pass on Hayden Hurst. This is a PPR league, guys. We joke about it. What feels like every mock draft. Jamison Crowder is so oh. safe in PPR. He's going to catch 14 balls a game for 27 yards. Thank you. But it works. In, it works in fantasy. I'll take Jamison Crowder here in the, the back of the 10th round. After Crowder, we have Baltimore's defense. Then Noah Fant. Okada, back to you, man. Yeah, that was a really good pick. Would have been one of my turn picks here. That is a guy that can easily be in your flex spot every single week, and you will feel fine. So good, good pick. Um, Well, listen, guys. Every quarterback left is absolute crap. So I'm just going to pick a couple <laughs> nice upside players in other positions and take whatever crap is left to me with my last pick for my QB3. And I actually like some options here at the running back position. And one guy stands out to me at the wide receiver position. Also, let's give another shout out to Fantasy Pros because I'm loving this. They put a little cuffs thing next to J.K. Dobbins on uh, the draft board for me because I have Mark Ingram. So this is just telling me, hey, are you interested okay. in having Mark Ingram's handcuff? There he is if you're interested. So that's pretty cool. However, I'm not interested. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Uh, what I am going to do is skip know. right over Sony Michelle, who would be my third Patriot. That would be just silliness. And instead take a guy I have talked about a couple times as being a potential uh, sneaky, massive RB value. There are two of them on the same team, and you can pick whichever one you want. It's the Miami Dolphins running backs, Matt Breida and Jordan Howard. One of these guys is going to have value almost certainly and it's possible that because of how late they're going both of them have value in a ppr league i'm going to take breda uh i think he can actually which by the way is the highest recommended pick by fantasy bros look at that um i think there's a very good chance that he is a sneaky back end rb2 in this offense gets a good amount of catches he's been an efficient running back in san francisco as long as this offense is at least somewhat more capable than it was last year breda can excel so that is a bench running back that could suddenly become a starter for me. I like that. And then at the wide receiver position, I'm going to take a guy I've been hyping up all offseason. I've probably mentioned his name like six times. So <laughs> maybe I need to stop. But it's Anthony Miller. Yeah. Listen, this is I a guy. Him, I didn't even put him in my queue. No, no use. No, this it, is it's a, coming back to Okada. Yeah. like uh, Maybe more than anybody else in the league, this is a guy who could – uh, ascend to the wide receiver one role on his own team. I think he could be that good that he takes over and Allen Robinson becomes a 1B. Like everyone's talking about, De- uh, talking about Deontay Johnson right now doing something like that. No, thank you. Give me Anthony Miller. Uh, I don't care who the quarterback is. He was great last year, injured. He's going to be healthy. I like it as a bench wide receiver with upside. 
All right, fair enough. Fellas, we're running a little bit late on time here. We're going to do 12 rounds. So we got, we're got we in the 11th. We'll each get one more pick after this round. So with that being said, guys, I'm a little thin at wide receiver, and it's a PPR league. Not sure that's what I would do in, in most cases, but I went RB early to see what happens. Here I am, guys. And in the 11th round, I've talked about being higher than consensus on Daniel Jones this year. I'm going to take Darius Slayton. I think he has yep. a, a wide receiver two upside, and we saw it a lot last year, actually. Those two, really good connection. I think he's my favorite Giants uh, pass catcher this year. So I will take Darius Slayton here. Good value in the 11th round. After Slayton, we have the aforementioned Ronald Jones, uh, <laughs> Sony Michelle, and Carrion Johnson. After those picks, we have John back up on the clock here at the 11.08. Yeah, so I have my three quarterbacks, two very elite ones, the top two. Um, I have three running backs. I have three wide receivers. Um, I would want one more of each of those positions. Are we? Are we doing? We're doing this and coming back, right? I nope. got this. Yep. The 12th. You got the twelfth round. Oh well. yeah, because you have a twelfth round pick. Yep. Okay. Numbers. Perfect. Numbers are hard. Numbers. Numbers are great. So I'm gonna go with a just screaming value, inexpensive bargain barrel PPR running back, and I'm gonna go with Naheem Hines, who should be heavily utilized in that passing game. In my opinion, has a chance to put up like James White passing numbers, um, or if not, just slightly below it. And to go this late with someone that I think is going to be an incredibly Philip Rivers fit pass catching running back. I'm going to go with Naheem Hines as a PPR fourth running back for my roster. All righty. I like it. After your pick there, Naheem Hines, we had Jordan Howard, um, Devonta Freeman, free agent. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Damian Williams, Marlon Mack, Sam Darnold, Daryl Henderson, Jamal Williams, Latavius Murray. John, back to you, man. Last pick of the draft. Last pick of the draft for me is a wide receiver that I continue to, uh, to preach about. Uh, someone that I think could be the next Julian Edelman. Um, someone that I think is going completely slept on, especially after the acquisition of Henry Ruggs. It's Hunter Renfro, people. This yeah. is a slot wide receiver that is going to be a target hog on that offense. Um, who doesn't look like he should be an NFL athlete at all. Like, you remember what Danny Woodhead looked like back yeah. in the day? Like, yeah. neither of these two guys look like they should be NFL athletes, but they are, and they're really, you know, like they're good for, for football. Hunter Renfro is a good wide receiver. He separates incredibly well, runs great routes, understands defenses, finds himself open a lot. He just, you know... He's not going to blaze you with speed at all, but he just understands how to nuance. And all of a sudden, it's like, why is there no defender within 10 yards of Hunter Renfro? Because he just understands coverage. So I'm going to go with Hunter Renfro, who I think is going to be a, a big-time breakout candidate this year as the slot guy for the for the Raiders. All righty. I like it a lot. Uh, Duke Johnson after that pick, then Tony Pollard, then Carlos Hyde, a couple of handcuffs. And guys, I don't have a tight end. I think in a normal draft, I would probably go. Well, I shouldn't say that. If I knew I had more picks to make and I would, you know, push it out further, I would take a tight end probably later because there's a couple guys that I really like here Hayden Hurst, Mike Gasicki, TJ Hawkinson, kind of all in the same tier for me. Jonu Smith has some upside. So I want to, I want to pass on those guys. I just want to bring this up. Alexander Madison is available at yes, the 12.09. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with Dalvin Cook, but he said, I'm gonna not going to do anything for the team unless I have a reasonable offer. He's had a long injury history. He might hold out a few games. We could see a scenario where it's Melvin Gordon 2.0 and Alexander Madison's a top 12 back and you're getting him in the 12th round um, for the first half of the season. So it's worth a, a late dart throw, so to speak. And I think the upside is also there. So I just want to make that point and I'll take him here with my, uh, my 12th round pick. He's a good running back. Alexander Madison is a, is a really talented prospect out of Boise State. I like him a lot. Um, if he gets an opportunity at that job, dude's going to take it. Like, he's yeah. he's a good running back. Yeah. After Madison, we have more backup running backs. So, Kata, keep it going, man. We had Raquel Armstead, then Boston Scott. Yes. <laughs> um, am I required to take a third quarterback or? You are not because I did not all take right. a tight end. Okay. Um, that's, you didn't do a tight end at all. That's true. All right. Well, 
listen, there is one backup running back that I really like the look of. And since this is the last pick of the entire draft, I'll just say who it is. And that's Chase Edmonds. Yeah. Uh, very good handcuff uh, there. Betts has brought up how good the Cardinals running backs were as a team last year. If anything happened to Kenyon Drake, that is very tasty. Um, Interesting note, all the, ro- the rookie wide receivers are still left except for Justin Jefferson. I'm actually kind of tempted to look that way. But I'm not going to because screw them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Chase Edmonds. Actually, I was going to. Your analysis. You know, oh, thank you. I was going to talk myself into going to a receiver, and then I was like, you know what? Chase Edmonds is going to be an RB one if anything happens to Kenyon Drake. So I will do that. Give myself tons of running back upside on my bench and feel quite nice. Okay, so after Justin Jefferson in redraft, who do you think the rookie wide receiver two is? Oh, mamacita, donde es Santa Claus? That's is very, very close. Uh, for me, it's between the, the big two, Jerry Judy and CeeDee Lamb. I don't trust Denzel Mims with the Jets in year one. Uh, I, I don't do. trust Philip. I don't trust. That's a good point. I also like Ayuk. I don't trust um, Michael Pittman with Philip Rivers, even mm-hmm. though I like him. I don't trust T. Higgins with Joe Burrow quite yet. So I think I'm it's between thinking, those two. I would what go about Henry Eden Ruggs? Even though we hate Henry Ruggs and how high he's going, he's probably higher on his depth chart than any of those other guys you just mentioned. That's true. He's going to have every opportunity to play 85, 90% of the snaps. He's going to be out there every down. Um, is his game going to fit with Derek Carr? No. We'll see. I don't know, he, but he'll have like what three or four slants and just take him to the house and he's, he's going to look fantastic with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, here. I think yeah. in a PPR I might go Ayuk. In a standard I might go Rugs. I don't feel good about Lamb or Judy this year. Really? Dude, yeah. Robert Cobb had over had over eight hundred yards last year. Yeah. Ray Cobb over eight hundred like yards Judy. doesn't excite me. I kind of like Judy to be honest as as my second wide receiver in terms of production for this year for redraft purposes. I think that opposite of Cortland Sutton and someone who's just a route running absolute savant, I think that he's going to make himself really, really friendly to Drew Locke. Um, he might not have like fantastic uh, volume necessarily, but I think that his volume might be higher than CD Lamb this year, potentially. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. We shall see. Uh, both. Excellent wide receivers, for sure. Love both. Uh, fellas, another fantastic mock. Mock Draft mm. Monday just continues in June. We are crushing it. We are going every Monday. A mock draft. This time, a super flex mock draft. Let's run back the rosters here. Let's go uh, position by position. Okada, kick it off, man. Who you got at quarterback? All right. Uh, at quarterback, I have the number two quarterback in 2020 redraft. That's Dak Prescott. Yes, please. And thank you. Uh, also, at super flex, since we're talking about that position, I've got Aaron Rodgers. Let's go two top seven quarterbacks in my ring. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. At the running back position, Christian. <clears throat> I forgot that I had Christian McCaffrey, to be honest. Guys. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at my roster. I'm like, these are some pretty good picks right here. Oh, wait, I have Christian <laughs> oh, McCaffrey. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, Mark Ingram, give me a nice stable floor. James White. Oh, look, some more floor. Man, this floor is high. <laughs> Matt Breida and Chase Edmonds bringing all that ceiling on my bench if anything interesting happens with those offenses. And then at wide receiver, I have got a lot of catches, boys. I have DJ Moore, Julian Edelman, Christian Kirk, and Anthony Miller. Delicious. Uh, and <laughs> and if you didn't think that was great, which it is, Darren Waller at tight end, very good chance to lead tight ends in catches <laughs> or be up there with Travis Kelsey, maybe. Oh, Basically, I have man. the best team Let in the just, league. Hold on, hold on. Let me just this is this is just prototypical uh hashtag mock draft Monday. Okada has the best team in the history of fantasy football yeah. every single Monday. So many catches. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing at the fact that Okada said, I got all these catches on my bench, boys. <laughs> I don't know why those are so I funny. Just, I just find it, I, I love, I just love the hyperbole, the over the top, the, the, yeah, he's the just, this, I got, of, let me just yeah. sell you on why mm. this is the best roster ever mm. constructed. It's, it's <laughs> just right, beautiful. It's going to be it's, tough to, to top so Okada's, but see what you can do here. You Impossible, got really, but give it a shot. <laughs> well, what I can do is I can tell you that I have uh, a running back that or a quarterback that two seasons ago threw for over fifty touchdowns. 
Mm. I have another quarterback that right. last year set the NFL record for most rushing yards in a single season with, uh, what was it, like 1120? 12, 12, 12, yeah, 12, 12 something. 12, 6, something. A lot. He had running back one numbers as a quarterback. Um, it was dirty. So I have the best quarterback duo in the history of fantasy football. Undeniable. Undeniable. That's actually yeah. not hyperbole. That's actually not hyperbole. This might be the greatest fantasy quarterback duo ever assembled. Um, after that, it kind of sucks. But so here's the thing. <laughs> At wide receiver, I've got Juju Smith-Schuster, who I think um, has a high ceiling, potentially a lower floor. Uh, that was more of a risky, high upside wide receiver pick. A wide receiver two on my team is Robert Woods, Bobby Trees, who I love to be a top 16 wide receiver that might flirt with top 12. Um, my wide receiver three is Terry McLaurin, who we all Ooh. love. My wide receiver four is Hunter Renfro. So I like that. Hey. I like those wide receivers hey. a lot. My running backs I don't like. I don't like my running backs. Um, I have David Montgomery, who should have 250-plus carries, and his role is very, very safe, but I don't like that offense at all. Kareem Hunt, to me, very interesting. Um, I think that he's going to be a standalone running back two slash flex play in PPR uh, for his role in that offense. But again, a lot of this still kind of remains to be seen. Like It's very possible that Kareem Hunt's role could be a lot smaller than I think it is. So it's very risky to, to have him there as my running back two. Um, my running back three, Keyshawn Vaughn in Tampa Bay, who I love as a rookie. Hmm. My running back four is a PPR monster in Naheem Hines, who I think is going to be very Philip Rivers friendly. My tight end is Hunter Henry. So basically, hmm. um, if I had to do an assessment, I think that I should not have gone with Lamar in round two. I should have snagged up a running back one there, came back and got either Russ or Kyler uh, in round three slash four. Uh, I think it would have uh, liked your team a lot better. It would I be so that. nice to have those two quarterbacks on a roster. Would it not? Oh, be? oh wouldn't it be look nice? At that roster. <laughs> By the way, be nice? now, before the Vets makes his team, <laughs> I I have to say, John, I think that turned out decently well for what happened at the quarterback with the, with the start. It went okay. It went okay. I think that's not bad. Like those are some okay running backs with a, you know, a Kareem Hunt has upside, and the receivers are nice. I don't hate it. Hunter Henry, yeah, yeah. not a good yeah. team, but. Uh, it's not it's not terrible. Okay, um, go now. The lack of running back one though, like as a running back. Yeah, guy, you have no chance at a running back. Player. Like has me just blotting a lot. Yeah, you're gonna be playing the waiver wire pretty hard in this league, trying to get that injured, sure. uh you know, starter, so to speak. All right, boys. Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray. That rivals Ooh. Pat Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. I'm sorry, it does. Mm. It's up there. Those are the yeah. next two quarterbacks you want if you're going. Dak Rogers may be rivals. That. I don't no, know. Re- yeah. dude, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, Tyler Lockett, so underrated. Michael Gallup, Devin Singletary, also kind of round out my starters. Now, here's where it gets a little shaky, guys. Hmm. Cam Akers, I like as a value pick. Jamison Crowder is a flex type of player. Darius Slayton also has upside, but we don't know what he's going to be this year. Alexander Madison, I took because we're assuming that there's some news regarding Dalvin Cook at this point. That could change at any moment in time. But as of this podcast, a great value there in the 12th round. And then Jimmy G, guys, underrated quarterback here, has upside, but also a nice floor, as well as my third quarterback. I did not take a tight end because at this point, Ooh. I'm full on punt mode, baby. Wow. Uh, those are the rosters. Those are the, the teams here with the mock draft. Fellas, fantastic show. I like these rosters quite a bit. Good strategy discussion here because we, we mix it up a bit. Some people went quarterback early. Some people waited running back early, so to speak. So all sorts of good stuff here on the Red Shirts Fantasy Football Podcast. Listeners, if you want to win a signed jersey by Devonta Adams, full mm. free, and you like what you're hearing, just drop that little rating and review in that podcast app. It's like I do. Super easy. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Okay. Uh, okay. With- <laughs> okay. It's, there's no mm. It's no, okay. 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 Oh, my God. Okay. We are officially... Uh, way over time <laughs> now we have to close out the show here we're back on wednesday and spoiler alert we have a- another super awesome guest jason moore of the fantasy football oh. with us on wednesday tune into that it's gonna be a, a fantastic show until next oh, time we were. unfortunately john won't be with us we gotta we gotta subpar replace one beard replaced with another yeah nice. until next time boys we are the red shirts we have at matt Okada, at dynasty beard at the fantasy pt Until Wednesday, wear the red shirts.